a group of them that decided to leave the camp and get up to Penfield Aerodrome, which is only a few miles up the hill, uh, and get get one of the Japanese planes that was all, lots of them were parked all around the edge of it, and McAllister was quite sure that he could start the engine and get it going. But the next morning, they were all back again, and we said, what happened? Well, he said, we, we knocked off the guard at one of the airplanes, and he said, got in, and he said, some of the things were different from me, but he said, uh, I couldn't start it because the battery, that something was wrong with the batteries, it was a failure. They, there was a group of them who were going to fly over to Darwin, you know, and get away. But they all came back. And we thought, well, my God, there'll be a row about that. But, you know, we never heard anything from the Nips about it. They never uh, showed any uh, ire or anger about this, this. And they never penalised the fellows in the group of six that went up there. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. But he, uh, he stayed with us and, of course, went up to Java with us in the end. And he tried, according to the stories I've had since, he tried to get another aeroplane wherever he was, in whichever camp he was in, but again he failed to get it. And so his, his two attempts to escape didn't work out. But mm. he came back and I think he <clears throat> did, became prominent in Melbourne doing something or other, I'm not sure now. Yes. Anyhow, he survived. Yes, he's still around. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether he is now. Yes, he is, and he organises a reunion on the closest Friday to the 15th of August oh. every year. Does he really? We're down to about 12 people that go to it. Yeah. At the and Naval and Military Club in Melbourne. The what? No, At the Naval and yeah. Military Club in what Melbourne. Did, what did he do in Melbourne? Was he a, did he stay in the Air Force? I, look, I don't know. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. No. But I, 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 there are reasons why I know yeah. about his yeah. reunion. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Vic, Vic Brand goes to the reunions. Yeah. Um, now, John Winter... Yeah. Did you utilise any of his skills uh, in... No, I never used him as a dentist. Uh, I, I don't know what what he did. Uh, he, he must have had business because we had no toothbrushes and we had no dental hygiene at all. So he probably uh, saw a lot of patients and helped them with their teeth. And I don't know what he did really. But he never. I never had to use his services. Do you know whether the Japs uh, No, I don't know no. whether he went to the Japs or not. Okay. How, how many chaplains do you recall being on Timor? Uh, two. Uh, Padre Binderman was the Anglican. He was a, he was a Tok H man, that's right. He was a Tok H. Uh -huh. uh, that must have been some religion I'd never heard of. But anyhow, he was an Anglican and he uh, started up services. We used to go to a service in the morning and the evening of, of Sundays and he did all the burials of course uh, and there were plenty of those. Digging holes, digging graves on Timor was very difficult because it's a coral island and there's not much topsoil on it and so our fellows would have to use an awful lot of crowbars to get a hole in the ground. In fact I think we did in the end get a pneumatic drill from the Japanese to do this. We, Anyhow, Benderman buried everyone, uh, uh, but then there was a Roman Catholic padre, uh, what's he called, Kennedy. He was an active Roman Catholic. He, 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 had a, he used to visit all these Roman Catholics in the hospital and do rounds, and uh, he'd bury any who died. So those are the two, and they came up to Java with us. Yeah. I lost track for most of them. Yes. Hello, darling. I'm off. Oh. Sorry, it, the now, Daiichi Maru, we, I remember the name well because I'd written it down well. And uh, when we got to the side of the ship, uh, we went out on lighters uh, in the bay, the ship was out in the bay, and we had to climb up stairs, uh, you know, steps to get onto the ship. But our... Would you stick an umbrella in your car? Uh, do you want to put... We, we, before you got that very important message about your stick and umbrella, <laughs> yeah. uh, we were talking about the movement of the force or your elements yeah, yeah. from Timor to yeah. Java in the day Chimaru. Well, it, I'll, I'll take you to the start of it. The, the afternoon before we left, a nip doctor came along and said he wanted to round the hospitals, round of the sick. So I took him round the sick 
and uh, there were plenty of di dysentery and diarrheas all over the place and they'd had a, a test done recently and I said, what's the result of the test? Oh, he said, everything's clear, everything's clear. And, and he went away. And as soon as he went away, the, the other NIP manager of the camp came and said, we've all got to move tomorrow morning at six o'clock and we've got to go to get down to, Ban to, um, Ch to um, Copang where the ship's waiting for us. So uh, we had a lot of stretcher cases, I think a lot, about 12 or 15, and they were all allowed to go in trucks, and the orderlies were allowed to go with them. I remember Bert Adams and Pat Bailey, they went in by about 12 miles into town. Uh, the rest of us were all assembled outside the camp and we all had to march in, so it took us a two or three hours to march, <coughs> march in, and then they marched us down to the lighters, we got on the lighters <coughs> and had our stretchers on the lighters as well. And, and I thought, well, how the hell are we going to get those stretchers up onto the ship because there was no, no facilities. So what we did was made sure they weren't going to get off the stretchers, tied them on, and we just hoisted them up as much as we could along the side of the ship. And it wasn't a very easy exercise for anyone. But that's the way we got them on board, and then we got on board ourselves, and we had to go down into the into the um, hold of the ship, and the, there were steps to get down into two or three different layers of holes. I can seem to remember some of us down at the bottom, and some on the next level, and there were no beds there. There were just spaces where you put down whatever you had to sleep on, and that was the end of it. And you were open to the elements. They didn't have the covers on the hold. So that's how we started. And things were pretty rugged. We had a lot of trouble getting water and a lot of the sick were still down there and they had their bed pans and the orderlies were running up and down the stairs with bed pans. The latrines were temporary and they'd been built out on the, over the side of the ship and they had a sort of scaffolding going out with three, three seats. And if you wanted to use the lavatory, you had to take your life in your hands and sit in one of these seats and look down into the water and hoping it didn't fall in. You know? mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that was the very busiest part of the ship, getting the sick who could walk up to the lavatories and those who couldn't walk, well, bedpans were being used. And this was one of our main problems because it wasn't very hygienic to have all this movement going on with faeces down in the mould of the hold of the ship. However, we we put up with it. We didn't want to, but we had to. And food was difficult. Um, they'd make a noise at a certain time and say food was ready and we'd go up the ladder, those of us who could, and we'd get rice and we'd take it to the others who couldn't get up. So it was a pretty rugged uh, week, I suppose it was. Yeah, a week we were on that ship. And we were when you're going up the straits between uh, between Lombok and Java, that's the last island before you hit the Java, there's a very strong current coming down and from north to south and our, our ship wasn't working very well. So Bertie was making all the noise and standing still and we were told then the Japanese were out there with the torpedoes and wanted to torpedo us and they, they probably did send some because we were throwing off depth charges all the time. But I imagine that when a torpedo is put into a current like that, it doesn't, doesn't find it. So we were lucky. We weren't knocked off. A lot of Japanese uh, uh, s torpedo uh, submarines worked on, on these prisoner of war ships and as you know, many of them were sunk on their way up to Japan and everything. So just to stop you at that point, you've just mentioned Japanese submarines, but were you not mentioning I'm the sorry, Allied submarines? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the American submarines. Yeah. 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 They, were, they were knocking off the Jap ships as fast as they could go. Now where were your, your, your stretcher patients? Were they on the deck or down in the hold? They were down in the hold. Oh. Mm. And they had to, you know, I mean, McLeod was one I talked to you about. He had an ulcer like you saw in that picture there. Yeah. And he couldn't walk at all. So we were mm. always, Mac, Mac was always on a stretcher. And there were lots of other stretchers, fractured femurs that were only in the process of healing and mm. so on, mm. with plaster on them. 
Mm. We had about 12 or 15 stretches in that. Yes, yeah. 